Here we have more than one battery in our circuit, and our batteries are connected such that the positive plate of one is connected to the positive plate of another. The problem says, can we find the current and the potential difference across each resistor? Determine which direction current flows in the circuit. And we'd like to draw a graph of how the potential will change around the circuit, starting with V equals zero volts at the negative terminal of one of the batteries. So one of the first things we want to do is take a look at our batteries and see which one is going to push charges harder in a particular direction. And it's a good time to use what is called conventional current. Conventional current flows from positive to negative. So it's like the electric field. And I'll just give a simple example. If we had just a single battery in a circuit, it would be a short circuit, first of all, because there's very little resistance. Here's our positive and here's our negative. Conventional current flows from positive to negative. Same direction as the electric field. even though we know now that it's the negative charges that really move the most. For historical reasons, we still often draw conventional current in a circuit. This would be the current if only the 6 volt battery were involved here. Now, what if just the 9 volt battery were involved? What would the current look like then? Well, conventional current would still flow from positive to negative. So we would have this. So these are two batteries which are opposed. The voltage of the battery creates what is often referred to as an electromotive force. Electromotive force, um, or EMF, has the symbol epsilon, and it'll be given in volts. So between the two batteries, which electromotive force is going to win here? Which way will positive current really flow? The answer is the 9 volt, because of its larger potential difference, is going to win. And so current will be expected to flow this way through our circuit. Now we'd like to use Kirchhoff's loop law for this circuit. And we have to pick a particular point to designate as the 0 volt point. I'm going to pick the negative terminal of the 9 volt battery as 0 volts. Now let's go all the way around the circuit using Kirchhoff's loop law. So this is a complete loop. Doesn't matter which way you go. And we want to analyze the potential changes around the circuit. All right, so once we go through the battery from negative to positive terminal, we're going to gain potential there. So part of our journey includes adding E2. And we'll be at a new potential, which is, of course, 9 volts. We'll stay in the wire for a little bit, remaining at 9 volts. Then we're going to jump across this resistor. 
Now, in the past, we assumed that jumping across a resistor meant that there would be a drop in voltage. But that is only assuming that the conventional current is in the direction that you're moving through the resistor in your loop. In this case, that is true. Uh, we are going to have current moving in the same direction that we're going in our loop. So it is going to be a drop uh, in potential. So one way to express that is minus delta V of R1 would be one way to say it. But an even better way would be I times R1. What I did was I replaced the potential drop in the resistor with Ohm's law being the current times the resistance. Now we'll be at a new voltage, which I don't know what it is yet. I'll call it the voltage at point A. We'll stay at that voltage until we get to the battery. When we're at the 6 volt battery, we're not going through the battery in the conventional way. Our loop tells us to travel from positive plate to negative plate. So will we actually be adding potential or losing it? The answer is we're going to drop in potential when we do that. We'll get to a new voltage, which I don't know what it is yet. We'll call it VB. In order to write that as part of a loop law equation, though, we want to subtract E1 instead of adding it. All right, this will take us to resistor 2. And we can see that we are uh, going to travel in the same direction that we think current is going. And so for that reason, I'll once again subtract the current times that resistance. This brings us back to zero. And so our loop law equation is complete. Now we'd like to plug in anything that we can and try to solve for any unknown quantities. So our electromotive force of the nine volt battery was of course nine volts. Our current is unknown at this time, but our R1 is four ohms. We will now subtract six volts and you can see how the batteries are opposed One's an addition and one is a subtraction because they're facing different ways in the loop. And then we'll subtract the current times R2, which was 2 ohms. This leaves us with only one unknown, the current, and we can solve for it. What we see is that there's a difference of 3 volts and a total circuit resistance of 6 ohms. Therefore, our current in this circuit is going to be 0 0.5 amps. Now at this time, we can go back and find the different potential drops in those resistors. Uh, so our current is 0 0.5 amps. Therefore, the drop in potential will be 2 volts there. So that's going to take us to 7 volts. Once we drop our 6 volts, we'll come back to 1 volt. And 
and our current being 0.5 amps here tells us that the voltage drop in this resistor is one volt, bringing us back to zero. We'd like to document what happened in the loop on a potential versus position diagram. So we'll start at the zero volt here. And let's just go in the same direction that we made our loop. So we'll go counterclockwise through the first battery. That's going to be a gain in potential of 9 volts. Then we'll stay at a constant potential in this wire. When we get to R1, we will drop 2 volts. taking us to 7. Then we'll stay at a nice constant potential until we get to the battery. Now, the battery is going to make us lose 6 volts because we're going backwards through it. And that's going to take us all the way down to 1 volt. Once we hit that resistor, we'll lose the rest of the potential returning us to zero volts. So both the equation and the potential versus position graph are supposed to tell the same story of what happened as we go around the loop in the circuit. So there was a two volt drop here and a one volt drop there. So we lose two volts we lose 6 volts in the battery, and then we lose 1 volt in R2. So this is R2, R1, and the battery E1. This will be the battery E2, which was a gain of 9 volts. And that tells the whole story.